is any place in you that has an offense with somebody, it has to be dealt with. Because an offense is like a disease. It just spreads and it touches everything that it comes close to and it poisons everything that it comes around. Because what God wants to perfect in you, the enemy wants to steal from you. The very same thing that God wants to perfect in you, Pastor Kim, the enemy wants to steal from you. The very, very same thing, Donna, that the, that the Lord wants to perfect in you. The enemy wants to steal from you. But you have, the word says, you have not chosen me, saith the Lord, but I have chosen you. You haven't chosen me. I have chosen you. You are all chosen by God to fulfill the great commission. You've all been chosen by God to fulfill the great commission. There's a plan. God has a plan for you. So, you know, he says, I've equipped you with all that you need to fulfill your purpose and work with working with the Holy Spirit in your life. You have been fulfilled, equipped, I mean, to fulfill that purpose that God has for you, every single person. But here's the warning, the, the, the word of the Lord. And this is what the Spirit of the living God was telling me to tell you. Be wise as serpents. Be wise. Say, I'm going to be wise as a serpent. And I'm going to be as innocent as a dove. I'm going to be innocent as a dove. For the wiles or the trickery or the schemes of the enemy are at work for the one who takes the enemy's bait. The schemes of the enemy are at work for the one that takes the enemy's bait. Say, that's not going to be me. God wants to increase everything in your life. And so we are not going to let the wiles of the enemy steal from us. Let's read Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. It says, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. We know this scripture. We quote this scripture. We, can, we have the scripture memorized. Most of us have the scripture memorized. Most of us can quote the scripture, and we do so at all times. Be confident. Be confident. In other words, be persuaded. Be firmly fixed in your thoughts. Be unmovable in your thoughts. Be confident of this very thing, not just anything, of this specific thing. What specific thing? Be confident of this very specific thing, saith the Lord, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete that good work or perfect that good work until the day of Jesus Christ, which is now Christ the anointed one. Say Christ the anointed one is perfecting that work in me, that good work. What's the good work? What is the good work? What is the good work? We quote it. What is the good work? Is it just your future? Is it just your, your position? Is it just your calling, your ability to uh, do a certain thing? What is the good work God is doing in us? He is perfecting our hearts that we would walk with an unoffendable heart. He is perfecting our hearts that we would walk with the pure love of God. Amen. So he who has begun a good work in me, in healing my heart, in causing me to have the right mindset, the right heart, is going to continue that work in me, in us, in each one of you, until the day of Christ. He's completing it. God is always looking at our heart. So God is always looking to perfect our heart in the way of righteousness. And let me tell you something. He uses church people to do it. He uses people at home. He uses your spouse to perfect your heart. The good work that he's doing and perfecting, he uses your spouse. He uses your children. He uses your work, your employer. 
right? But at the same time, the enemy is also looking to steal from you, and he uses your church people, your friends at church, to do the very same thing. He uses your wife, your husband, your children, your boss, your employees to do the very same thing. So what is the Lord saying here? Let's read the whole passage from 6 to 11. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. In as mo- in verse 7, just as it is right for me to think of to, to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my chains and in the de- defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of me with grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray. Here is Paul's prayer. The Apostle Paul's prayer was right here. That your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. Our hearts must abound in the love of God and in the love for mankind. That our hearts may abound. I pray that your love may abound still more and more in all knowledge and in all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. What is the good work that he's trying to do in our hearts but cause us to be people that are unoffendable, an unoffendable heart? Say an unoffendable heart is attainable. It's, it's absolutely attainable in Christ. And we must stay in Christ to make sure that the unoffendable heart remains unoffendable, right? Unoffended. Let's turn to 2 Samuel now. 2 Samuel chapter 6. So as I was preparing for this message, and I sat before the Lord, and I was reading my Bible, reading and reading, and, and then I sat before the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you... What are you saying? Because I'm not getting anything. Can you imagine? The preacher not getting anything to preach. The problem. <laughs> that could be a problem. And I sat there and I sat there and I sat there. And I read and I read. And I waited and I waited. And then finally I just grabbed my notebook and I grabbed my pen. And I just put my pen to the paper and I said, Lord, I need to hear your voice. What are you saying to, to me to speak to them? And that's when he said, he said, I'm doing so much in the term, in the way of glory in this church, and I'm going to continue. But the enemy has sent his assignment to try to stop what God is doing, and that comes in the way of offense. It comes in the way of an offended heart. And he is saying, you need to speak to the congregation because not only are we speaking to the, to the offended heart, but we need to deal with the offended heart. And we need to deal with the spirit of offense that has crept its way in. It's a spirit of offense that we cannot tolerate. A spirit of offense will rob not just the church, but you, which is the church. Let me just rephrase this because I know what God is doing in the house of glory is going to continue because I'm pressing in for everything he has. I know that it's going to continue, but will it continue for you? Okay. So if you want to be a part of what God is doing at the house of glory, then you have to make sure you're listening to this message because if there's any place in you that has an offense with somebody, it has to be dealt with because an offense is like a disease, It just spreads and it touches everything that it comes close to and it poisons everything that it comes around. That's what an offense does. It's like a disease. It's like cancer. An offense is like cancer. So let's go, because then, so then the Lord said, go to second Samuel, or go to, go to Samuel. I knew, I knew the passage he told me to go to about David. Okay, so second Samuel six. And in verse 14, David danced. This is 2 Samuel 6 and it's in verse 14. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. 
So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with singing and with the trumpets. Now, as the ark of the Lord came to the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David leaping and whirling around and you know dancing before the Lord and the Bible says she that he or that she despised him in her heart she's looking at him praise and she's just getting sick she's feeling repulsed she despised him in her heart outwardly she may have looked fine but in her heart there was an issue she had an issue with the way he was dancing. She had an issue. So they brought the ark of the Lord. They set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. And then David offered burnt offering, peace offerings. And when David had finished offering all these, um, the people, uh, he, um, he blessed the people. And then he distributed among all the people the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women to everyone, loaf of bread, meat, cake, raisins. And they all departed, everyone to, the, to his house. Look at verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. And she was disgusted with his praise and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself in the eyes of the mates of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. And so, so David said to my, Michael, it was before the Lord. It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father. This is a strong rebuke. It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord and I will be more undignified than this. And I will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. He's saying, no, I'm not going to wear the shame that you're trying to put on me. This is before God that I dance like this. This is my gratitude towards God. This is my heart's expression towards God. Who are you to judge my heart's expression towards God? Amen. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Wow. The offense in her heart caused, caused barrenness. She had no children. She couldn't conceive seed. She couldn't produce seed because of the offense. What Michael did not understand or did not like led to her bondage, people. It led to her bondage. Boy, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. And you know we're not Presbyterians. Her offended heart led to her barrenness, you guys. I'm going back to Philippians. You can turn your Bibles back to Philippians. And don't say, thank God she's leaving that, because I'm not done. Thank God she's leaving that chapter. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> Bear with it. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians 1, 9 and 10. And this I pray, that your love may abound still, still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. That's what God wants for us. He wants us, our love to abound more and more. He wants our love to be sincere, and he wants us to be without offense. That is definitely attainable, but it is something that you're going to have to guard your heart. What God is doing in this church is going to bring up offenses within each one of you. It's going to bring up an offense. The music's too loud. Oh, and we hear these offenses, by the way. They, they Somehow they do get around. First of all, look around. There are people that you do not see here that used to be here that used to serve wholeheartedly lest you think that would never happen to you. There, were pe there are people that used to be here that used to serve wholeheartedly. Where are they? Some got offended. 
Some are not here anymore. Some are not, uh, God offended and removed themselves from their position of where God called them to be because offense crept in their heart. I'm telling you this because the Lord has said the spirit of offense needs to be dealt with because it's a cancer and it needs to be eradicated. So some, for some, oh, the music is too loud. I'm sure this is one, although I haven't heard it. It is too long. I mean, they worship forever. And then there's forever ministry time before he even gets to the word. Praise God, I'm hearing. Wonderful. <laughs> His clap annoys me. Hmm. The service is too long. The preacher is a woman. The woman is an apostle. Oh, dear God. Someone didn't say hello to me. No, I trust me. This, this we, get, we hear this. They didn't say hello to me. They looked right my way. They didn't even say hello. I know they look my way. It's like, people, are we that petty? Or people go on, they'll go to like a, a study, women's study. Honestly, I haven't heard it from a man. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> Women go to a study, and they go off, and they're so happy. And then they, something happens. And then, you know, they just, you know, and then they start telling a friend, and then they tell another friend. Now you've got three, four, five people that are all in this mess. Who's offended at who? And then they all come to me, and you've got layer upon layer upon layer of offense, and then they all want me to fix it. Guess what happens when I try to fix it sometimes? They turn around, and the arrows go flying in my direction. I become the, 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 the culprit. I become the one that, it's like, wow, people. But it happens all the time. It's part of the job. It's all right. I'm not upset. But I'm just letting you know. What did you say? Bring donuts. Bring donuts. <laughs> Bring donuts. Is that so? Do you guys have donuts in your meetings? Is that why? <laughs> Pastor Kim, make a note. We need donuts. Okay, here's, here's, a, here's an example. No, not using any names or anything. But somebody calls me and says, hey, so-and-so hasn't been around for a while. I, I, think, the, um, I think they got offended, you know, at, at, at someone. And um, I said, okay, you know, let me, let me give him a call. So I give this individual a call. Hey, we haven't seen you in a while. Is everything okay? You know, just make sure you, I mean, something didn't happen. I was, I was told maybe something happened. Maybe you got offended at something. I didn't get offended. I, I didn't get offended at all. You think I'm that shallow that I would get offended and not come to a church because I got offended? I'm not offended. <laughs> okay. You're not offended. No, it wasn't. Right after that, I got unsubscribed from the email. <laughs> mm. And I don't even know what was happening. I'm like just trying to be the, you know, okay, I'm calling them. You know, how are they doing? How are you doing? You, did you get offended? Everything all right? No. I can't believe you think I would be offended. I'm like, oh, I just, I ask everybody that. If they, if they leave, oh, that's the first, it's like the exit question. Hey, did anybody, did you get offended? Like, I just want to know. Is it, that's like a, that's like the go-to question I ask people if I know they leave or whatever, right? Wow. So you can't be that touchy. We cannot be that touchy. That shows you need a lot of healing steel, which is fine, but this is a healing church. <laughs> so get the healing that you need. Come, get healing, you know, ask us for prayer. We'll help you. We love you guys. You know, the offenses that come, you know, they come from various people. So-and-so gave me a word, and it didn't come to pass. Or so-and-so gave me a word. What did she say? Oh, and they interpreted it completely wrong, and they felt like they needed to pursue what they inter the false interpretation. I I'm telling you, the craziest things... You know, and then what happens is they get offended at the individual that gave the word. It's like, what? 
you guys, we need to be mature. We need to have an unoffendable heart. So, you know, I know I'm, th these can be funny, and because in reality, we see beyond what's going on, and it is kind of funny, but it's really not, because these are real stories that I'm telling you. I'm just not putting the names in. Um, but the thing is, is this, is that these individuals, unless if God has told you to leave, that's a different story, right? But that you really hear the voice of God, that's a whole other message and a whole other topic, because they say, oh, because I hear this all the time. God's told me to come in obedience, and I'm supposed to do this, and so here I am in obedience doing this, and then two weeks later, three weeks later, they get offended at somebody, and they're out. I, I thought you said God told you. Don't say God told me if he didn't, and don't say God told me if you're not sure. It could be your idea, and that's all right, but look at this. God said, now I'm out. Because I got upset, I got offended. Well, then either God didn't say or you're majorly in disobedience because if God truly said it and now you're out, then you're in a double disobedience, one that you got offended and one that you just turned your back on what God said. Right? Oh, I'm pouring it on thick tonight, but it's the truth. He says it's a book. I don't want to write that book. And if God told me to write the book, I would. So far, he hasn't told me to write that book. Oh, thank God. <laughs> no, but it is true. The spirit of offense definitely will, will get in there, and it, it starts to spread and like a cancer. And, um, you know, and like I said, it doesn't, I'm not threatened by it because I know the anointing that's on my life. I know the call of God that's on my life. So I know no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. But I do, but I, my heart goes out to the individuals that keep taking the bait. They keep taking the, those that keep taking the bait, it's like, people, you're taking demonic bait. Can we call it what it is? It is demonic bait. Bait. Oh, did you hear what happened so-and-so? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, when they call you, what are you doing? I'm going to church. What do you think I'm doing? You know I go to church every Thursday. This happens too. Oh, come with us. No, but it's, I'm going to House of Glory. Oh, but we're going over here. What? And it's the person that left. Talk about being used by the enemy to try to pull somebody else out. Let me tell you something. you got to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Innocent as doves. We have to realize God wants you where he has placed you, but the, and he will use you there, and he'll grow you and mature you, but the enemy is trying to pull you out of the very place, and he's going to use offense to do it. He's going to use the irritations. He's going to use those irritations. I can't stand that when this happens, and, that, and I can't do this, and I, I don't like it. It's an irritation. It's an offense. People go, I'm not offended. Yes, you are. In offense is when you have anything in your heart, in your heart, any ought against somebody. It could just be you're frustrated with that individual. That is an offense. We're not supposed to be offended. We're not supposed to be easily offended with one another. Right? Okay, I've got one last scripture, and then we're going to pray because we got to get rid of this spirit. We got to nip this thing in the bud, right? So we're in 1 Peter 2. 7, 1 Peter 2, 7 through 9. Now, this is talking about, this is Jesus, you know, uh, stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. But I'm still going to read it to you because I want you to get something at the very, at the end here. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, he has become the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. We know that, you know, Jesus can be an offense, and he has been an offense, and so if you believe in Christ, you're going to be an offense. That's not the offense I'm talking about here, though. That's not the type of offense I'm talking about here. I'm talking about where your heart becomes easily offended. Different. Verse, uh, at middle of 8, they stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Okay, back up. We'll go back to 8. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Back up, read it again. They stumble being disobedient to the word 
to which they also were appointed. You have an appointment. God wants to appoint you. Offense will cause you to stumble, and it will cause you to miss your appointment. It will remove you from your appointed places and your appointed positions. Is that not heavy? And that will not be you. Say, it's not going to be me. Because where God has called you, you're going to faithfully serve. Amen? Amen? So this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to stand up and we're going to pray. Because like I said, I really believe that this was not just a teaching. We need to eradicate what I sense. It's not, it's not all of you. And it's also some people that are not here today. How convenient. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send them the link. How about that? But, but we do need to, but it's a spirit. And this was why the Lord put this on my, on my spirit, because it's a spirit. And it kind of moves around, right? It kind of just subtly moves around, tries to be unnoticed, tries to stay undercover, but it's still happening. And it's trying to taint whoever it can. So the first thing we need to do when we have either an offended heart right, is ask God to forgive us. So right now, well, let's all just pray. You can pray out loud, but I want you to search your heart. Ask God to search your heart and ask God to forgive in any place where there is an offense that you have taken with somebody. Mm -hmm.